Hello and welcome inside the WOSN studios. Time for Mark's Madness. Joined as always by Mark Miller. I'm Matt Finkel. And Mark, there are 715 <laughs> teams in the state of Ohio that play high school football. 224 made the playoffs and now we're down to 112 yeah. as we get ready for week gonna 12. We're going to whack them in half again this weekend, and aren't yeah, we? We'll just yeah. keep getting it down until yeah. we have seven. Yeah. One in each division. Yeah. And one of those teams still competing in Division Two is Lima Senior mm -hmm. after a thrilling overtime yeah. victory in Week 11. Good that they got a win like that. Now, that, now they, were, they were up by 10, then they were down by 10 or 12 or whatever it was. So that game really ebbed and flowed. But to come out victorious in the end was huge for the psyche of that team after having so many close games through the last couple of years that they've lost or, or lost leads at least. Uh, now, as they move on, Miamisburg was good. You, but you can't give up 368 yards. The thing that saved them is they got four turnovers. And so that allowed them to stay in there. But in playoff football, you can't give up turnovers like that. So it was the defense. Again, we've talked yeah. about the yeah. rebirth of their defense all season, and it, they came up huge in this yeah. game. But the offense, of course, was still there. Oh, yeah. Ruben it's had three good. scores. Rico, 196 receiving yards mm -hmm. and a touchdown. Yeah. And Gordon threw for four yeah. touchdowns. So we can count on that. We knew Jaden Walker also had a big game. And they'll need that against Cincinnati LaSalle, who yeah. – is the one seed in this region, and I think it's going to be a tall order for the Spartans, yeah. but... Defending state champs. Defending state yeah. champs. What do they need to do, though? Well, I, I the think win? they need to cut down on penalties. They had over 100 yards in penalties in that game against Miamisburg, too. So they kept trying to shoot themselves in the foot, but they bailed themselves out with turnovers and great athletic play. But they have, and certainly turnovers. You know, you can't, you got to get turnovers. You can't give them up. Right. Uh, so if they do that, they've got the ability. they got the talent on both sides of the ball to play with LaSalle. Um, it's a, I think it could be a heck of a game. It's going to be a great game. Yeah. A lot of talent all over the field oh in this yeah. one. And when, when, yeah. you, when you go up against the defending state champs, I mean, that's all you could ask for in the playoffs, right? right? You're going against yeah. the guys who have the crown. you got to take it from them. That's right. It doesn't matter if you beat them in week two or the, the championship. you got to beat them somehow to get there. Well, very exciting for Lima Senior, Coach Fell, and, and the entire Spartan community. Mm -hmm. In Division Three, how about Wapakoneta yep. over Belmont? 44-22. Yeah. This game was interesting because Belmont yeah. – has a very unique offense. Yeah, very tight. You know, it's the wing tee, but it's very tight. And quarterback's almost like a magician. The, the fullback is really almost beside him, you know. Tough, tough to read because you don't see that stuff. Tough to practice it. Uh, and they've got some ability, too. They've got little guys, but they were very, very quick. Uh, and, and, you know, the one kid, the running back, Davion, uh, he, Langford, I think his name was, or something like that, he had a, over 100 yards in the first two drives. Now, he gets hurt. Who knows what he could have done? Maybe not much more. They'd have caught on to it. Wapak's really good. But now going up against Mount Healthy, Mount Healthy is a good team too. So you, you can't give up that many yards rushing. You know, I'm sure both those teams, Lima Senior and Wapak, are saying, hey, defense, we got to batten down the hatches. we got to tighten it up. Offensively, they're both pretty good, and they, they scored enough points to win. Right. Their offenses kind of carried the load a bit while the yep. defense caught up. Also in Region 10, Salina falls to Trotwood Madison 44-14. This was a game that I attended. And Trotwood got out to a fast start, 18-0. They're they, really good. They actually scored in, in like the first 13 seconds of the game. Salina rallied. They were down by four. It was 18-14, and then the Rams pulled away. No quitting those Salina guys. And, you know, finishing at 7-4, and four, uh, I, you know, like all good teams, Trotwood Madison started fast and finished strong. You know, their, their first and, and fourth quarters, they outscored them 30 to nothing or something. But... Hey, Salina football's back. They've done a good job. They, they've won here two out of the last three years in big years. Um, that, that's a great season for them. And to lose to Trotwood is not uh, an embarrassment at all. That's a good program. First playoff appearance for Salina since the late 90s. I think it was 98. Yeah. So good to see them back in the postseason. Yep. We know the community was very excited, and the guys played their hearts out yep, they sure on did. Friday night. Yep. How about in Division Four, a game you were at and called, mm -hmm. and you saw on WSN, I hope, OG over Indian Lake, 23-15. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a handful of teams this year that were making their first Postseason yeah. appearance, I think Belmont against Wapak as yep. well. That, yep. was their first. that was their first. But how about the community support and <laughs> the atmosphere at Indian Lake for this contest? This is their Lakers' first appearance. Yeah. Well, you and Mark Shine and I talked about it in a press box. We were there 90 minutes before the game, and their, the Indian Lake side was packed. As soon as we pulled around the corner, we said, something's going on here. Did they have a chicken dinner before the game or something? No, the fans were just there early, and they were packed out, and they stayed all the way through. At the end of the game, they gave a standing ovation, and not a stand-up one of these deals. They clapped in unison for about five minutes. It, it was unbelievable. And then they went down and waited for the team to come off the field, and several of the players, when the coach got done talking, went out onto the field. Lots of, they really appreciated the effort. And, you know, Coach Coburn had told us earlier in the week that he had some really classy kids 
on that team. And I think the, the community just rallied around those guys and uh, appreciated them. And it was just, that's what high school football is. I was just going to say. They lost. And that's still what high school football is all about. That's exactly what all of high school sports yeah. is all about. When you can bring a community together like that and mm. see the, the fan support was just outstanding. I, yeah. We can't say enough about and it. And OG packed their side, too. Oh, I'm, yes. I'm not slighting OG, but it was just uh, because of the home right. crowd. And the, and, and the steak sandwiches were really good. And, of course, we knew Mark Shaw <laughs> was going to appreciate those. Yeah. But the first game, so the outcome didn't go the way the Lakers planned for yeah. their first week 11 appearance. But quite the environment there. And got to credit sure OG going yes, into that do. environment. And Ken Schreiner knew it was going to be tough. Yes. You know, and so he prepped his guys, and I thought they played very poised. You know, they, they took care of the ball. Uh, they, they did a good job on offense, having a pretty good mix. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to be a tough out. I mean, they, they've been in the playoffs every year, except for here and there. But yeah, you know, they've, they've got, got a tough one coming up. But, they do. And they've got good skill guys on offense. Underbrink mm -hmm. is, you, know, you feel very secure with him at the quarterback yeah, position. Right. He doesn't make yeah. a lot of good mistakes. Player. And they've got some good wide receivers as well. Mm -hmm. And now they face Bishop Hartley, though. Yeah. And, we, and Aaron Matthews on Press Row a couple of weeks ago said that Bishop Hartley was the best team in the state disregarding division, <laughs> so which is a big statement. Yeah, but they're, they're always good, and yeah. this year looks like maybe they're even better than usual. But, you know, any time you play uh, aggressive defense like OG does, uh, you, you cause havoc on the, on the line of scrimmage, uh, and then if you just balance, they've got that balanced offense. They can run, they can throw, they throw it a little more. Uh, just take care of the ball. You know, they can stay in it. If you stay in it, you get a team into the fourth quarter, then they start to doubt, you start to believe, and who knows what can happen then. That will be one of our rebroadcast games this week. We'll get to our full rebroadcast schedule later in the show. Moving on to Division 5 now, mm -hmm. Coldwater shuts out Bethel Tate 42 to nothing. And if there was one thing we were sure of this week, I was, I was pretty sure that Coldwater was going to get off to a fast <laughs> start in Week 11, and they scored on their, I think it was their first play from scrimmage. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we talked about this a little bit last week as well, but seeing these teams that get into the playoffs for the first time and how difficult it is to win and we just so take for granted what Coldwater and Marion mm -hmm. Wilco and these types of teams are able to yeah. accomplish. Yeah they do it year after year and, and uh, you know Coldwater never punted in this game and uh, they, they hold the opposing team to 142 yards and, and they weren't an eight seed you know these these teams are all pretty good and uh, they, they got another shutout you know how many shutouts do they have this year but uh, they're really, really good, and, and it's just too bad for Bethel Tate that that's who they drew. You know, they, they probably thought, oh, good, we're drawing a three seed. Wrong. Yeah, you know, not in that region. Bad deal. <laughs> well, we'll try to keep, put it into context for you as Coldwater makes a run. We're expecting them to, to go far mm -hmm. again. But they do have to play CHCA this week, yeah. and that's a rematch from last year, and mm -hmm. these two schools know each other well from baseball as well. Mm -hmm. So I know that Chip Otten is not going to look past Cincinnati no. Hills. No, Chip, you know, Chip has, isn't where he's at and hasn't had the success for, for being, you know, a new guy on the block. He knows that you've got to play him week at a time, and anybody can beat anybody based on how you play and what kind of the, uh, a night they have. But they beat him 34-3 last year in Piqua. That's where the game is this year. So uh, they're going to have a little of that deja vu thing, like, oh, here we go again, if Coldwater gets off to another one of those fast starts. So, um, you know, you've got to favor Coldwater, but, hey, they're, none of them are going to be easy. You know, you look at the score, and they win by 30, 40 points, but somewhere in that game, it, it was a nail-biter, you know? So. Well, this feels like a very complete cold water team, which should mm -hmm. work to their advantage. But Tenora cruising past Seneca East 48-6. to mm -hmm. six. We're in Region 20 now, Division 6. Yep. And Ayersville falls to Colonel Crawford 42-10. to 10. So now the Rams will face Colonel Crawford. Mm -hmm. uh, Tenora, you know, they're in it every year. They're really good, again, as usual. Colonel Crawford, um, you know, at the, at the school over by Mansfield, North Robinson is what they call it. Um, you know, not, not a great tradition, but hey, like I said, you know, second round, they're all pretty good. So it could be a good game for the Rams. And then staying in this region, Van Buren goes on the road to Gibsonburg and gets a win 45-16. Very yeah. impressed yeah. with the Black Knights. They're, speaking of not easy outs, they're a team I don't want to play right now. They won eight in a row, yeah. you know, and they're playing really, really good. Uh, Gibsonburg was 10-0. and 0. Now, we did talk about their level of competition, but still, you blow them up, you know, by that score, 45-16 or whatever it was, and you're 10-0, and 0, uh, you're playing pretty good football, and Van Buren is right now. Also a break for Van Buren that Delta defeated Winford. That's an 8-1 upset, a little bit surprising. Now yeah. that means Van Buren plays Delta and not Winford. Now, of course, if Delta beats Winford, you're saying, well, maybe you don't want to play Delta. Yeah. But I think yeah. the Knights were thinking maybe we're going to have to face the top seed Winford. All of a sudden, we've got the eight seed Delta. That, that is true. You know, Winford's got the great tradition, but they have great regular season tradition. They don't have great playoff tradition. Maybe their league, 
the teams that they play in regular season don't get them ready like some other leagues do. But uh, Delta, good, good tradition up there. Not a lot of playoff uh, years, but they've had some great, great players come out of Delta. All right, let's go Including, to region. Including, here's a bit of a trivia fact. The leading rusher all time, any division in college football, went to Delta. Wow. Nate Kamick. Wow, look at that's why we have Mark Miller on the show. Mark well, Miller, I only know because he trivia, played at Mount Union with my son. Oh, trivia tidbits with Mark <laughs> Miller. All right, in Region 22 now, Jefferson mm -hmm. over Spencerville, almost an identical score. It was yeah. 24 to 10. I think last week was 26 to 10. Mm -hmm. And the Jeff Cats, Chris Summers, we talked about how difficult it is to beat the same team twice yeah. in a row, especially a team like Spencerville, which hadn't lost yeah. coming into Week 10. Yeah. Just all credit goes to to the red and white, right? It does. It does. And and you're right. They're going to look back on this season. And they're going to be 9-2, uh, and two, and both losses to the same team in successive weeks. Uh, that, uh, yeah, you're right. It's hard to beat any team twice, let alone a really, really, really good team like Spencerville. So uh, Jefferson earned a whole lot of respect, not only throughout the season and week 10, but now this opening win, that, that was huge. And how about the way the defense did it oh, again? We know that yeah. Spencerville racked up an, an unbelievable amount of rushing yards all season. Yep. They didn't give up a rushing touchdown in either game. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of good players. Of course, Dalton Hicks is a player of the year in, on defense, and, and he's the real deal. I mean, I, I, he can play. Um, but, yeah, you, they got Mechanicsburg now, 11-0, yep. and 0, and I've heard, I don't know much about Mechanicsburg, uh, but I've heard that they're really good. So this could be another test for Jefferson. And Mechanicsburg, I always just think back to last year in the Minster game, how they lost. It was an overtime, a two-point. Two point, three, four overtimes, I forget how like many that. overtimes, yeah. but it was a two-point conversion that yep. Minster stopped. And then they were, <laughs> and you know what Minster did last year. So. That's right. And Marion yeah. Local beats Miami East 48-23 at home. The mm -hmm. same thing that we said about uh, Coldwater could obviously be said about Marion Local and should be because, you know, they're yeah. going for the five, Pete. That would tie yeah. Norwalk St. Paul for the most, or no, I'm sorry, St. Ign Ignatius. It's, it is St. Ignatius, yep. not yep. Norwalk St. Paul. Yep. Uh, St. Ignatius for the most consecutive state titles ever yeah. in Ohio history. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. They just don't beat themselves. You know, they, they have very few penalties. They don't turn the ball over. Uh, they are balanced. They had 209 yards rushing, 227 yards passing. Uh, you know, they're up 35-9 at half. This game could have been a lot uglier than that score indicates, that's for sure. But, you know, Tim Goodwin calls the dogs off. He, he <laughs> just wants to win. He does yeah. No style points. Just give me the W. Survive in advance. Now yeah. they'll deal with West Liberty Salem yeah. coming up week 12. All right, let's close with Division 7. We've still got a play to break down. Okay. Crestview gives Macomb everything it has, though. This might have been the game of the weekend. In Surprise that of the week for me. Panthers yeah. winning 27-26 on a, on a late mm. score, and the Knights were leading in this game with three to go, I think. That's right. Yeah. Um, you credit Crestview. They came in at four and six. Now they play in a good league, so they were, they were prepped. But I think everybody thought Macomb was just going to blow through the first few weeks of this, this playoff season, but they had to fight for their lives to get this one done. And, uh, you know, they're good, you know, but this is a wake-up call. They, the coach has their attention this week in practice. I'll guarantee that. I don't know, it doesn't matter who they play. They're going to be ready. Well, McComb now has Lipsick, who defeated Arlington. And let's take a look at a couple of plays from that game and show you right. what Lipsick did to knock off its BBC rival. All right, we're going to take a look at the very first score for Lipsick. Nate Breck, look at him bounce it outside, broke one tackle, broke an arm tackle, got away from that one. This guy dies, breaks that one into the end zone, 38-yard touchdown. On a great run, take another look at it, trying to pin the line of scrimmage so he can bounce it. And now he's making a linebacker miss with a cutback, and he's going to use his speed now to outrun so they can only get arm tackles on him. They can't hit him in the front or along the side, and he gets it into the end zone. That's the way they started the game. That's their first score. Then we're going to look at the, the passing part of it. Here's Alex Schrader. He's going to look up Hunter Meyer on a crossing route. The ball's thrown up high. Hunter goes up and grabs it. He's able to make a miss on the cornerback here in slow motion. Take a look. Good protection up front. You can see the three-man route up top. Hunter's crossing from right to left. There's the catch. A little behind and up. The defender falls. And now one-on-one. -on -one. Good job by that receiver not blocking in the back. Or else that would have been called back. And here's, here's your guy Nate Brecht again. And now the, the, big, the important thing about this is we're going to look at Gavin Cup on the block. He's the Ohio State guy, left tackle. Look at this. Now you see guys flying, including one of his own. He just knocks people around. He's clearing a path. And Nate runs off his block into the end zone for a touchdown. I think Nate had four touchdowns, you said? I think he had four Great in the night. game, yep. And then yep. That, that other one was yep. the pass. But Lipsick That's a good win good. for them. They really yep. did look good. Now they'll play Macomb. The Panthers won the regular season meeting. Yep. 
37-8 in week six. All right, one more region to discuss, mm -hmm. and it's a local heavy region. Minster yeah. over Fort Warmie, 37-7. Good win. Wildcats led 13-7 at the half. It was close, then they pulled away. Yeah. Meanwhile, Riverside over Ada, 32-7. Great win for the Pirates. Yeah. Yeah, really good. I, I thought that'd be closer. I thought Ada had a chance for an upset. I, actually, that was my pick of an upset last week, and Riverside sure took care of business, so this could be a real good game, Minster and Riverside. So that's a, a MAC NWCC game. Mark and I get to call that one. Game, and yep, we'll have that one for you. And then there'll be another MAC NWCC game in this region as Fort Warmy, or excuse me, Fort Recovery mm -hmm. defeats MVCA, and then Layman Catholic knocks off Covington. That's a 7 2 upset mm -hmm. for Layman Catholic. So now Layman and Fort Recovery. Yeah. That should be a good one as well. It, it should be a real good one. And, and I wasn't at Fort Recovery last week, but I bet the, the atmosphere was similar to Indian Lake. First, play, first, first yeah. home game, yeah. and first they, And they got the yeah. win, and it, it's crazy over there anyway. We were over there regular season, and it's live over there, man. They, they love they their the football party team, too, and, yeah. 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 So that lots, lots to look forward to there in Division 7. And we've got most of it covered for you on the West Ohio Sports Network this weekend. Six rebroadcast games. Let's take a look at the schedule. It begins Friday at 11.30 p.m. on WTLW with that Fort Recovery Layman Catholic game. That game will be played at Spartan Stadium. And again, you can see it Friday, 11.30 WTLW. Friday, 11.30 WOSN, Lima Senior versus Cincinnati LaSalle from Kettering. And then Saturday at 7 p.m., Mount Healthy versus Wapakoneta. Then three more for you Saturday, 9 p.m., Riverside versus Minster. That one's coming from Sydney Stadium. Saturday, 11.30 p.m., Jefferson versus Mechanicsburg, also from Sydney. And then Sunday, 9 p.m., OG versus Bishop Hartley. That one's out at Bell Fountain. Lots of rebroadcast games for you. Our local teams are we're whittling them down, but great football and great action throughout Week 11. Looking forward to more of it in Week 12. That's going to do it for Mark's Madness. Thank you very much for joining us this week, and we'll see you next week.